He is the one we worship. He is the one we honor. He is the one we adore. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 I give God praise for just being in the house with the saints today. Amen. I am honored to be here. Good morning. Let's give God praise for Pastor Rosa Wilson in the house today. Hallelujah. I love you so much, Apostle. So good to see you. We'll continue to pray for the Father in the name of Jesus. We speak the strength of Almighty God over Apostle Rosa Wilson. We give you praise that she is here in the house today. We thank you, oh God, that you are strengthening her more and more and more and more and more. I speak the strength strength of almighty God to you this day in Jesus name Father we thank you hallelujah Amen. let's give God praise for apostle let's give God praise for pastor hallelujah Amen. Amen. Pastor Alan Edge doing a fantastic job I'm so proud of you uh, I was getting ready to say so ah. <laughs> but he, I, that's my brother I love him, I love him, I love him you know my bishop is younger than I am but he's still my father in the ministry <laughs> praise the Lord but uh, let's just give God praise for Pastor he's done a fantastic job yes. uh, amen we're going to have to say it. birthday much praise the Lord, happy birthday <laughs> amen and moving on up in the world to God be the glory let's just pray, we're going to get right into what we're going to do today Father, we thank you, we honor you, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you. Ah, we can never thank you enough. We can never praise you enough. We can never honor you enough. When we take this time, we take this minute to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. Father, come into this place where you're already here. But come do what you want to do. This hour, as I stand before your people, let the word of God flow for me like rivers of living water. Amen. Let the people be encouraged, edified, and built up in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you and I give you praise for assistance from heaven. I thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost for being here in our midst. I thank you, Angelic Host, for being in our midst. I thank you, Heavenly Host, for being in our midst. Let the name of Jesus be exalted in this place. We cancel every assignment of the devil. We cancel every assignment of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. We remind you, you are under our feet. The blood of Jesus is against you. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Now, Father, we just give you praise. Come and walk amongst us and have your way in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to start off with just... As I was praying uh, this morning, um, what God began to show me about this church. And so I want to just start off by just giving a prophetic word to the house. Um, hallelujah. And so the, the name New Heart has much significance to this church and to the people that are part of this congregation. And I don't want to ever, I don't want you to ever think lightly of yourself because you're bigger than you think you are. <laughs> and so the Spirit of God uh, is upon this place where new hearts are concerned. You know, in Ezekiel 36, God said, God said, I will give them a new heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure of the history behind the name of new heart. I'm sure it's absolutely fantastic, and I really would like to to know the history because every time God gives us a name, there's a reason that he gives us a name. Mm -hmm. But what God was showing me today was that there is an anointing of love on this house because of the new heart. Mm -hmm. Because of the new hearts that God has placed on the inside of you. And he has placed that anointing up on you for you to give him to others yes. for you to present new heart to others for you to let others know that they can go beyond where they are and that's what the testimonies were about this morning so in that because God has given you a new heart uh, you are going to start noticing that God is going to send people to you or send you to people that seem like they're unwanted, 
that seem like nobody really wants to be bothered with them, that seems like they're down and out, but God is going to send people your way for you to minister to and for you to touch and for you to present him. <laughs> because when you present new heart, you're presenting Jesus. Yes. And so the anointing of God is upon you. So sometimes you might feel drawn uh, to people that nobody else may be paying any attention to. But you need to pay attention to them because that's the anointing that's on you. And God is even going to start sending people to the house, sending people. And they may look a little strange, may act a little different, may not be living a lifestyle you want them to live. But God is presenting them to you so that you can present them to him and that he can give them a new heart. Come on, can we give God some praise? Amen. Come on, can we give God some praise? Amen. And I want to prophesy to this young man. Tell me your name again. Keely. 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 Listen, you're greater than you think you are. Mm -hmm. The anointing of God is upon you. And God is really going to use you to cause people to catapult into another level in him, to, to cause people to push, but, but at a faster pace, just because you come into their line, just because you speak, the word of God into their life. Just because you take a minute to, to talk to them, to minister to them. I see a lot of young boys that God is really going to have you to really minister to and really bring into the kingdom. Some of them don't have a lot of problems. But because of the new heart that's on the inside of you, God is really going to use you to be a blessing to them. After a while, it's going to be looking like you can't get rid of them. They're going to start hanging out at your house. They're going to start burning your wife. <laughs> but it's the spirit of the Lord that's upon you, that's drawing them. And by them being drawn to you, you, of course, will bring them to Jesus Christ. And then don't be afraid of the anointing of God upon your life to preach the gospel. It's there. It's God. And he is bringing you to where he wants you to be. So be bold. And not only that, very strong prophetic gifts. You're going to begin to prophesy. You're going to begin to see and hear like you've never seen and heard before. And you'll stand in the house as a prophet of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. And so. I need to ask Pastor how much time I have so I don't, I don't go over myself. He said we'll be here all night. <laughs> well, we want to do that. Praise the Lord. You know, yesterday, even before I got here, I knew what I was going to do on yesterday. But I had no idea what God wanted me to say to the house today. And he spoke something to me last night before I went to sleep. And then I was like... Uh, I got to make sure this is God. I don't know because it's a message that I share a lot. But when I got up this morning, it was it was him. <laughs> and so we are giving God praise. And what I want to talk to you about is uh, your benefits of salvation. And this is a message I preach a lot. As a matter of fact, I, I probably need to put it in a book. But um, I want to talk to you, and I may have talked to you about this before, I don't know, but today God has really laid it on my heart. Uh, I want to talk to you about what I call God's um, benefit package, God's salvation benefit package, because not only is this for you, but this is what you present to others when you present Jesus to them. And so we're going to look today at what it really means for us to be saved what it really means for us to um, have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And I, I want to just present this package to you, and there's probably more in it than what I'm presenting to you, but I want to present to you what um, I believe God is saying to us today. Romans 1 and 16, Paul says, I am not ashamed. Mm -hmm. Of the gospel of Christ. Amen. For it is the power of salvation. 
Amen. To everyone that believe the gospel, the good news, the, the good news of Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. He says, I'm not ashamed to tell other people about Jesus. Why? Because it is the power of God to salvation. Amen. And so this is what our life should be about. Our life should be about presenting Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God Amen. to others. And so I was just enjoying the testimonies this morning. It's almost like I don't really have to preach because, you know, hey, <laughs> they're doing the work. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, let's bless his name. So where, where we are, where we are situated, um, where we are in our lives, where we are on our jobs. Hallelujah. I want to welcome Deacon Miss Pam Mason is here with me today from my church. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, um, my dear friend D.R.D. Davis is a part of our Strength Ministries Outreach. She's here with us on the today. Amen. And so the, I didn't bring the whole church this time, like it would be the last time, but we give a God praise. Amen? Amen. And so we understand that salvation is Jesus. And so we want to look a little bit about what it really means to be saved. What it really means to have Jesus Christ in our lives. Um, Isaiah 12, verses 1 through 3. Let's go there. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, look, we'll go to verse 2, 2 and 3. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. And so when we look at this word salvation and we go back to the Greek, we go back to the Hebrew, we go back, we find out that there are many words compelled in this one word, salvation, or to save, in this one word, and we're going to look at these things, there is deliverance, there is healing, there's protection, there's provision, there's peace, there's joy, there's victory, there's wholeness in every area of life. Amen. So when we present Jesus, Yeshua, we are presenting all of these things. We're not just presenting um, a ticket to heaven. You're not just saying, you know, when you die, you're going to go to heaven because you're saved. What we are saying is this, this is what you get here in the earth realm when you receive Jesus the Christ. And you know what I was studying this morning? And I looked up at, at uh, verse 3. It says, with joy you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation. Mm -hmm. This word salvation right here actually is Yeshua. Amen. Jesus. That you can draw from Jesus. Amen. And this is what we are presenting to people now. And I like to call it God's benefit package. Mm -hmm. Psalm 68 verse 19. Mm -hmm. It tells us that God daily loads us with benefits. Daily, every day, the benefits from heaven that we have. And so uh, salvation is actually the benefits of living in heaven on earth. Mm -hmm. The benefits of living in Jesus on earth. The benefits of knowing that power of God that Paul talked about in Romans 1 and 16. It is a power of God to salvation. So a, a saved life is a supernatural, power-filled life. Amen. The sad thing about it is most Christians don't know that. They know they say, they know what they love Jesus, they know when I die, I'm going to heaven. But most don't know about the power that comes to us because we have accepted Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so you are loaded with power. Amen. Uh -huh. And you are loaded with power every day, power that you can draw from every day. When we draw from the wells, you know, wells represent water. 
Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers. Yeah. Why? Because that water. well is on the inside of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rivers of living water. Yeah. Life-giving water. Mm -hmm. And that's what you are giving people when you give them Jesus. You are giving them living water. Mm -hmm. First of all, that's what you have. Mm -hmm. You have living water on the inside of you. Amen. And the sooner we learn about it, the sooner we can walk in it, the sooner we can empower ourselves, the sooner we can move forward in that. You know, I've been walking with Jesus for a long time, looking at the young ladies in the back, all those beautiful girls back there. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise for them. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I, I accepted Jesus when I was eight years old. When I turned 18, I preached my first sermon. So I've been preaching for 50 years. We just celebrated yeah. that. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Haven't done everything right. Haven't been perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. But I can let you know that mm -hmm. Jesus is real. Yeah. And I've come to know that he yes. is real. Amen. Yeah. I'm 68, giving God praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But I can tell you today that every walk with Jesus has been absolutely awesome. Praise the Lord. But I did not always know about the power of salvation. It wasn't until later in life that I learned about the power. But when I did, it changed my life. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God some Amen. praise. Come on. So I want you to get this in your spirit uh, today. New Heart Worship Center. That God has empowered you. And he has given you the responsibility of introducing that new heart to others. And this new heart is by way of salvation. So the first thing uh, that we want to recognize is that when we accept Jesus, or when you give somebody Jesus, immediately, can you say immediately? Immediately. Immediately, immediately you are delivered from the power and penalty of sin. Immediately, when you accept Jesus, the devil doesn't want you to know this. This is why we have to learn the word of God. This is how we got to grow. This is how we got to learn who we are in Christ. Amen. Yeah. Because we got a devil, and you're going to have to deal with him as long as you are here in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to deal with this Amen. devil. Mm -hmm. But you have power and authority Amen. over him. Amen. Right. Come on, give God some praise right there. Amen. So Colossians 1 and 13, let's just look there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I love my Jesus. How about you? Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 So this is one of my favorite scriptures, but I'll probably say that a whole lot because I got a lot of favorite scriptures. I just, I just think the whole Bible. Praise the Lord. Colossians 1 13 says, God has delivered us from the power of darkness. And translated right. us into the kingdom of his dear son. That kingdom that pastor is telling you to live and preach about and teach about. So when you got saved, you were over in darkness. But Jesus delivered you from darkness oh and placed you in the kingdom of light. And whoever you introduce to Jesus, whoever you get saved, you snatch them from the kingdom of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of light. And so now we have to learn how to be children of the light. We have to learn how to live in the light. We have to learn how to walk in the light. And we have to learn how to use the supernatural power of the light. Amen. Yeah. So you're yeah. immediately delivered from the power and penalty of sin, meaning now for real you do have a ticket to heaven. <laughs> because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. But uh, the gift of God, come on, is eternal life. life. And so when we receive that eternal life, come on, we know we are going to be with Jesus forever yeah. and ever and yeah. ever. However, if you do not grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you can still have misery on earth. You can still uh, be battered and torn and be down and not know who you are and not enjoy the benefits of being saved yeah. because you have not been taught uh, uh, and understood what it really means to be saved. Amen. You know, we hear, we've been hearing that term for years, to be saved, to be saved, to be saved. What does it mean to be saved? When I was a young girl growing up in church, they used to say, we're not going to open the doors of the church. You know, and people would be looking back for the 
doors of the church to be open. <laughs> you know, rather than saying we're like, you know, introducing you to Jesus Christ and, and giving you an opportunity to become a part of this fellowship. And so there's been so much terminology that we have used over the years that being saved is kind of like just a cliche. Mm -hmm. Just And you'll talk to people on the, on the street and say, are you saved? And that's oh yeah, I know this. I, I'm saved. Mm -hmm. But they can't tell you what it means or how they know they're saved. Or, you know, <laughs> come on, I give God praise that we did grow up with the Roman rule to salvation. Mm -hmm. Are y'all familiar with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Romans 10, 9, and 10. Mm -hmm. No one forget that. We call that the Roman road. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Come on. And believe in your heart. Come on. Come on. That he is the son of God. Come on. You shall be saved. Right? Mm -hmm. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Let's just look at that right quick, because that's something you need to have in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind. Uh, that's a memory verse you need to memorize. So I'm giving you an assignment along with everything else pastor's giving you. <laughs> if you're not familiar with this, let's, let's memorize this. All right? Mm-hmm. Romans 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So when you are introducing Jesus to someone, and, and when they begin to receive him in their heart and say it with their mouth, that brings them into salvation. Verse 10 says, for with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. There's a new heart. Hallelujah. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen. So that's our memory verse. Next time I come, I'm going to ask you if you know it. <laughs> come on, let's give God some praise right there. Amen. So we are delivered from the power and penalty of sin the moment we make that confession. The moment we receive Jesus in our hearts and make that confession with our mouth, we are delivered from the power and penalty of sin. The second thing is healing. Healing is a part of our covenant benefit, our covenant right. Healing belongs to us. Jesus was beaten with stripes. He was pierced in his side. He, they put thorns on his head. He was pierced in his hands and his feet. And the Bible tells us that by his stripes we are healed. Now this is a this is a quick teaching on the benefits of salvation. That's why we need to put this in a book, Pastor. <laughs> so this is a quick teaching. So I'm going kind of fast with this today, but. Understand that what happened with Jesus leading up to um, uh, his resurrection, the things that happened beforehand were for our benefits. And the beating that he took was for our healing. And the Bible tells us that. Now, what we have to do is learn how to receive that healing, how to live in that healing, how to hold on to that healing. Because it's, a, it's something the devil does not want you to know about, does not want you to understand, does not want you to have. And so we want to make sure that we continue, we are continually feeding our faith concerning all of these benefits. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Amen. And so according to your faith, be it unto you, according to how you are building up your faith. Now, there's all kinds of stuff going on in the world. People are dying left and right. Uh, saints are dying. My husband passed away from a very serious illness 12 years ago, but that still does not negate the word of God. Amen. It's still, you know, I'm glad he's in the presence of the Lord. I'm glad now he's ready to beat him up when he left me. <laughs> but I'm glad he's in the presence of the Lord now. But I'm still here. And because I'm still here, I still have a responsibility to continue to preach and teach the word of God. To continue to say what the word of God says. Amen. And so we have seen many get healed. We've seen many people blessed. Hallelujah. But at the same time, in those times, situations when they don't get healed when when in the in the earth realm they get healed in the heavenly realm we still have to hold on to the word of God while we're here in the earth realm amen so healing is our covenant right and our covenant benefit one of the things God said to me gosh I gotta watch my time about communion was when we partake of communion um as we reflect on 
So Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And as we reflect on his broken body, as we reflect on the beating that he took, as we reflect on the, the blood that was shed, he's, you know, we reflect, he said, this is my body which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This do to understand that I was broke, so you don't never have to be broke no more. Amen. I say you don't have ever have to be broke another yeah. day in your life, I in any that. area of life. Yeah. And it became my confession. It became my word, right? Yeah. And so he said, do this in remembrance of me. And the, the beating that he took on his back was for our healing. Remember that I took this beating so that you might be healed. By his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. First Peter 2, 23, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right? And so healing is a part of being saved. Does it mean we're not going to get attacked? No, it does not. And a lot of the attacks really have, have more to do with how we're taking care of our bodies. So that's a whole other teaching. Amen? Amen. Come on, shout amen. 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 All right, so a lot of times it's not so much an attack, it's what you did to yourself. That's right. Or what we did to ourselves. Hallelujah. But praise the Lord, God is still God. He's still faithful. Amen. And his word is still true. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, th the next thing is protection. Protection is a part of our covenant uh, benefit. It's a part of our salvation covenant. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. God promised never to leave us. He promised never to forsake us. He promised to be with us always. Praise the Lord. And so protection is his. He is with us. He is with us at all times. He is taking care of us in every situation and every circumstance. Hallelujah. And we want to give him Praise for being God in our lives. First Thessalonians 3. Let's see. Make sure I'm in the right place. Second Thessalonians. Praying 3. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. God is faithful to keep you, to protect you, to watch over you. You know, and so in this, we have to realize that we receive these promises by our faith, and we walk by faith and not by sight, and we can't look at the natural. We have to look at where God is when we are in the midst of situations. For I'm just going to give you an example. I have family and friends in New Orleans, which is a constant hurricane place. I have friends in Florida, which is a constant hurricane place. I tell people here, I tell our church, you know, we've been blessed, but never, don't ever think that nothing can happen to you. That's right. That's right. You just need to know who you are in God. You need to understand the power of God that's on the inside of you. And you need to be ready to reach out and touch somebody else in a time of need. Sometimes we might all be going through a difficult situation, but who's going to be the light? Where the light? Who is the light? Where the lady that was the light? Did she step out? <laughs> okay. You, we all are the light. And so even, you know, I, I've, I've just been, you know, as the weather's changes, reminding myself that we do have a winter that's coming. But in the midst of all of that, he is still God. Amen. And we still got to look to him. And so it doesn't mean you're not going to have challenges. It doesn't mean you're not going to go through difficult situations. But it does mean that there's a supernatural power on the inside of you to help you rise above. <clears throat> when we were going through COVID, God said to me, I want you to rise above. Rise above every situation. Rise above every circumstance. I'm still rising above. Come on, let's give God some prayer. Amen. 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 But you've got to be able to have the word of God on the inside of you to help you to rise above. So protection, when you're going in and out, when you're on the highway, when you're in your car, when you're in your home, when you're in the airplane, you know, I travel a lot across the waters. Oh, my God, help us, Jesus. <laughs> travel a lot, long hours in the airways, and we've got to trust God. You know, sometimes turbulence may hit. I'm like, Jesus, I'm on here. Like, you don't know I'm on there. <laughs> but 
we've got to trust the God that we serve so that we're not afraid to do what he has called us to do, or to go where he is telling us to go. And we've got to understand that his divine protection is on me, it's on you, it's on our children, it's on our grandchildren, it's, it's on um, our families, it's on our communities. And when you're driving through your community sometimes, just pray the blood of Jesus. Speak the blood of Jesus over your neighbors, over your home. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Provision is the next thing. Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all of my needs. That's a part of your covenant benefit, a part of your covenant right. Whatever you need, you can go to God for. You can ask, you can seek, you can knock. Come on, you can trust God to provide, to take care of you. This is his promise to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peace. The peace which passes all understanding. Jesus said, peace I give unto you. <laughs> peace, supernatural peace. Even the scripture says, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is staying on me. If, if you're not in peace, get into some worship. Get into the presence of the Lord. Get into the word of God and allow the peace of God which surpasses all understanding to overtake you. You know, people be wondering, how are you going through that situation? And you're not, you know, you're not down and out. You're not crying and boo-hoo and you moving forward. And you know what? There are times when we do cry and it's okay to cry. God gave us emotions. Hallelujah. And so there's this thing that I taught our church many, many years ago. When you cry, what you tell the devil? Don't be don't moved by my tears. Don't be moved by my tears. Tell the devil, don't be moved by my tears. I'm having an emotional release right now. God gave it to me. I'm using it. But okay. it's got nothing to do with my faith. Amen. Amen. Because I know him. Hallelujah. And whom I have believed. Hallelujah. So don't ever tell nobody don't cry. Let them cry. God gave us yep. those emotions to, to let them out, to release them. Praise the Lord. When they finish, you know, now what you going to do now? <laughs> What's your plan? How are we going to move forward from here? Because God's got us. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So the peace of God is, uh, is yours. Joy is yours. Praise the Lord. Joy. <laughs> the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's a supernatural strength that comes from the joy of the Lord. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Sometimes you got to call it up. <laughs> Sometimes you got to tell the devil not to gain the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to have joy. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels Amen. like. I'm going to have me some joy. Hallelujah. Yeah. And get up and clap, dance around, do something, go take a walk, raise your hands and praise the Lord for joy. Hallelujah. This is all a part of being saved. Yes. All a part of understanding who we are. All a part of knowing who we are in Christ. Who we are in Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then wholeness in every area of life. John 10 and 10. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. abundantly. <laughs> he wants us to enjoy everything that is given to us. He wants us to enjoy deliverance. He wants us to enjoy healing. He wants us to enjoy protection. He wants us to enjoy provision. He wants us to enjoy peace. He wants us to enjoy joy. <laughs> he wants us to enjoy victory. He wants us to enjoy all that he is. God yeah. intends for us to have a life of joy. He intends for us to have a life of enjoying all that he is. Now, in this life and in this walk, there will be challenges. Yes. In this life and in this walk, there will be difficult situations. I will be lying to you if I told you that you're never going to have a tough time. If I tell you that you're never going to run into a, t a tough situation. If I tell you that you're never going to run into tough people. Because <laughs> they're out there. Amen? Amen? This world that we live in. Hallelujah. But... When we know who we are in Christ, when we understand what it means to be saved, when we understand the joy of salvation, come on, we begin to see a difference in the way we look at things, in the way we think about things, in the way we respond to things, in the way we react to things. Amen. And so I'm, you know, just wanting to encourage you today to understand you can go every day. What do you need? Do you need deliverance today? Go draw from that well. Of salvation. You need healing today? Go draw from that well 
salvation. Come on, what is it that you need? You need provision today? Go draw from that well of salvation. You need peace today? Go draw from that well of salvation. You need to overcome? You need victory? Go draw from that well of salvation. You know, the Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. That's in the Bible four times. Four times the word says the just shall live by faith. We got to learn how to live by faith. We got to learn what faith is. We got to learn what it means to release our faith. Come on, we got to learn what it means to really trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and leaning not to our own understanding. Sometimes you got to build up your faith. Sometimes your faith may not be that. Sometimes we're stronger in one area where faith is concerned than another. And there are times when you got to go build your faith up in a particular area. How do you do that? By way of the Word of God. By finding the Word of God concerning that situation, that circumstance, and getting that Word in your spirit. Come on, can we give God some praise? God. So in this, understand new heart, that as you present the new heart to others, you are presenting to them salvation. You are presenting to them the benefits of living in heaven on earth. But at the same time, also remember that you <laughs> have these benefits. This benefit package belongs to to you and every day you can go every day you can draw from now there's an asset that god has given us to help us to draw from these uh wells of salvation and that asset is the baptism of the holy spirit yes. you know jesus said you shall receive power so look at this yes. paul, paul says i'm not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ for it is the power of god the salvation. Well, before Jesus left, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you'll be witnesses. You'll be able to share. You'll be able to give this new heart to others. You'll be able to also live this life here in the earth realm full of the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's a whole nother lesson, a whole nother teaching. But to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, is a supernatural strength that God yes. has given the church. Yes. It's a supernatural power. It's a supernatural asset. Hallelujah. So I was saved for many years, but I didn't get filled with the Holy Spirit um, until age 23. I got saved at 8, but I didn't get to introduce to the Holy Spirit to age 23, but it changed my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. It turned my life around. So there is a supernatural power that comes when you begin to roll. Yes. There's something on the inside of you. Come on, that strengthens you. The Bible tells us in Jude, it says, build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So that's another way to build your faith. Come on, it's praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, can we give God some praise? Amen. And so what we're going to do today as I close, I want you to stand. Hallelujah. And we're going to begin to draw from this water. We're going to begin to draw from this wells of salvation. I want you to begin to look at your life. What is it that you need from God? Everything that you need from God is in this salvation benefit package, even if I didn't mention it. <laughs> it's in the package. Hallelujah. And I want you to begin to go by faith. Hi, Rob, I come by and just see. And I want you to begin to go and, you know, when we look at a well, so we can, there's several ways you can do it. You can put your bucket down and you can, you know, pull it up and bring up your bucket. Or you can just go and dip your hands in <laughs> and just begin to drink. It just depends on the well. So however you want your well to be today, <laughs> I want you to begin to draw. I want you to begin hot, roll, wild, come by this thing, to go and draw whatever it is that you need from Jesus, who is our salvation. Whatever you need from this benefit package, I want you to begin to take it. Maybe you have a decision you need to make. Maybe um, it's, it's a situation in your home that needs to be taken care of. I don't know what it is, but God knows what it is. You know what it is. And I want you to begin to receive from God. Let's begin to go, Father, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, hallelujah, as we are standing before our wells of salvation. Ah, 
who's wrapped up in Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Father, by faith, ha, we begin to draw from this well. By faith, we begin to draw. Go ahead and begin to draw whichever way you want to withdraw. We begin to draw. Come on, begin praying in the Holy Ghost. We begin to take everything that we need. Ha, rabaka. Even if you don't pray in tongues, just go ahead and take everything that you need. God, we draw in the name of Jesus. We draw from the wells of salvation. We draw, ha, rabba, deliverance. We draw healing. We draw protection. Ha, rabba, kambadea, We draw provision. Glory be to God. We draw peace. Ha, rabba, kambadea, dadasa. We draw joy. God, we draw answers to situations and circumstances. God, we draw turnaround. God, we draw changes in our lives. Come on. Come on, church. Rabba, kambadea, rabba, kambadea, dadasa. Rabba, kambadea, dadasa. Oh, rabba, kambadea, dadasa. God, we draw everything we need today. Thank you that you are our God. Thank you that you are prayer answering God. Thank you that you are moving in our midst today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, give God some praise. And you can do that every day, every time, whenever you need anything from God. Go get it. Go get it by way of prayer. What's prayer? Talking to God. Communicating with God. Receiving from God. They say what God's word says. Decree what God has decreed. Come on, bless his name. Come on, bless his name. Come on, bless his name. Hallelujah. And there's one more thing I want you, I want you to, to do here and I'm, I'm done. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Yes. And as we are increasing our faith, praise the Lord, we want to take a minute to thank God for everything we believe in God for. Amen. Everything you're asking God for. Everything you just draw from the wells of salvation. I want you to begin to lift your voice now and give thanks. Begin to lift your voice and praise the Lord. The Bible says it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Come on, I want you to begin to talk to your God. Come on, I want you to begin to honor Him. Come on, I want you to begin to praise Him. I want you to begin to thank Him. Hallelujah. For his goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for your strength, Lord. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your peace. God, I speak the peace of God now. I speak the peace of God to every person in this building. Every person in this house. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. Father, we pray. Come on, don't stop, don't stop. Let you just come. And I'm just saying myself in agreement with what it is you believe in God for. Come on, can we get some something good? Some good music. Listen, the hand of God is on you, girl. You can preach.